Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Crime 2 News First at 4. I'm Tom Sherry. And I'm Whitney Ward. It's good to have you with us. We have a new twist tonight in the case of a North Idaho woman who has made headlines now for the last two years. We're talking about Lori Eisenberg, who has now been officially charged with murdering her husband in 2018. That's right. Eisenberg appeared before a judge in Court Lane today to face the new charge. She was already in federal prison on embezzlement charges. Crime 2's Taylor Vida was in court today. He joins us live with the latest. Well, yeah, guys, Lori Eisenberg's court appearance was brief, but it got right to the point. Two years ago, police believe she killed her husband on Lake Coeur d'Alene. Now, we started covering Eisenberg back in February of 2018. At that time, she was accused of embezzling money from a nonprofit that helped low-income families with housing. But a month after she was caught, the body of her husband, Larry Eisenberg, was found in Lake Coeur d'Alene. Larry's autopsy showed that he had a lethal amount of Benadryl in his system. Now, authorities didn't initially name Laurie as a suspect in his death, but today, well, that's much different. The sheriff's office continued to investigate Larry's death. Last month, a grand jury convened here in Kootenai County and eventually charged Laurie with first degree murder. She was already in federal prison serving time on embezzlement charges, but today she appeared before a county judge to face the murder charge. Now, specific details of the killing or a narrative for that matter aren't clear, but right now she's charged under a section of Idaho's murder law that references using poison to kill someone. Here's what was briefly said in court. Willfully, unlawfully, and deliberately, with malice of forethought and with premeditation, kill Larry Eisenberg, a human being, to wit, by creating a situation where Larry Eisenberg was submerged into Lake Coeur d'Alene, thereby causing his death. For now, Eisenberg is being held at the Kootenai County Jail. Her bond was set at $2 million, and her public defender did not object to that. Eisenberg is set to appear in court again a week from today. That could potentially change, though. Reporting live outside the Kootenai County Justice Building, Taylor Vito, Cram 2 News. Taylor, thank you very much. Owners of a downtown Spokane bakery are now working to repair thousands of dollars worth of damage after a car smashed through the side of their building. Yeah, it's the third business in Spokane that's been hit by a car this month. Cram 2 Shana Waltower explains how sweet frostings is still baking among the damage. Yeah, guys, this boarded up wall right here has a lot of potential customers thinking that the shop is closed, but management says, nope, we're open. We're just trying to get back in our regular flow of baking and frosting as quick as possible. So we came out and there was a car in our building. <laughs> Manager Jessica Winfrey says the car was traveling through the intersection of Washington and First Avenue early Saturday morning. Another car ran a red light and T-boned the first car, slamming it into a wall of the bakery. It was a really loud, horrible noise. Destroyed cakes, a smashed cake case, a shattered wall of windows. Winfrey estimates they're looking at $20,000 of damage, at least. The building, of course, those kind of damages on a historical building, you can't really put a value on. Most of the boards and glass are cleaned up, but they're still not able to store or display some of their cakes. We've lost a little bit of business due to that and due to the fact that we look like we're kind of boarded up and closed. This is the third time a vehicle has crashed into a Spokane business this month. Last Thursday, employees at Prohibition Gastropub had to repair a smashed wall and several broken boards. The owner said no one was hurt and they were able to open for dinner time. The week before that, a woman stole a truck and crashed into the front of Tacos El Sol in North Spokane. Police said they arrested the woman and no one was hurt. People try to turn on red lights and they can't see and running red lights and it's kind of a high traffic place. It's what Winfrey says she sees every day from the window at the corner of the intersection. She says it will be another six weeks before the building is fixed and all of their pastries are back on display. In Spokane, Shana Walltower, Cram 2 News. Well, applications are now flooding the Washington Paid Family Leave Program. Right now, they say it's taking 10 weeks to process applications. More than 30,000 people applied for that program just in its first six weeks. That's triple what the state had expected. Leaders now hope to have processing time down to just two weeks by June. Mm. 
I know you keep telling us it's not <laughs> spring yet. I know you keep saying that we have more winter weather in yeah. store, but I am loving this spring-like weather. Yeah, it was great. I we had this. It. We had uh, me too. We had the sunshine this morning. Then the clouds rolled in, yeah. uh, in again this afternoon, and I think we're going to see the clouds stick around through tomorrow. Oh. Might even see a snow flurry or a rain sprinkle by tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon as well. Come with me, if you will, over here to the Doppler radar. We have some snow falling across areas of northeastern Washington and northern Idaho, but the temperatures have still remained on the mild side. So again, there you can see the snow showers right there. Uh, again, when we talk about these uh, particular snow showers, we don't expect them really to cause uh, a whole lot of problems. And even tomorrow, when it looks like we're going to be seeing uh, some of this snow, uh, or I should say flurries tomorrow, none of it will stick, shouldn't be inclement, just kind of gets your attention. We've already had to deal with that earlier this week. So 41 degrees, that is the current temperature right now. Winds out of the south at six miles per hour. Look for mostly cloudy skies through tomorrow 30 the overnight low 47 the expected daytime high tomorrow and it'll either be flurries or sprinkles at times not all day long here's a look at your weekend forecast i had it in the 50s yesterday now i've got 49 on saturday and 48 on sunday not terrible but i will tell you whitney we will see temperatures climb into the 50s later this work week we'll talk more about that coming up in a few minutes something to look forward to mm -hmm. Tom. thank you well, fixing fire damage is one of the specialties of ServPro Coeur d'Alene. Yeah, the business, uh, the cleaning business responds within 24 hours to an emergency situation. And Creme 2's Brandon Jones explains how they helped one business get their business back on their feet quickly. Shortly after firefighters contained the flames that rampaged through this building, there was another group on the scene to assist with the business owners that were devastated by the fire. ServPro of Coeur d'Alene finds pride in helping those impacted by an unexpected situation. And we're a fire and water restoration and cleanup company. Their slogan is like it never even happened. January 20th was the day Luis Gomez tailoring shop came down in the fire, and that particular date is beginning to fill further and further away. They've been working with us since we started, and we are so impressed with the work and the, those clothes don't smell like smoke. Drenched clothes were laying out on the street with a smell of smoke etched into the fabric that seemed like it wouldn't go anywhere. That was until ServPro spoke with Luis. We'll help as much as we can with smoke damage, deodorization, document drying, electronics. The business has a location set up in Hayden, Idaho, where they fix these issues. Machines like air scrubbers and dehumidifiers were used to fix Luis clothes. The locally owned business helps during emergency situations, but they also stay prepared for any restoration needs. From Coeur d'Alene, Brandon Jones, Crim 2 News. A developing story out of Idaho continues to capture the nation's attention. Three deaths, two missing children, a drive-by shooting, and a reported doomsday cult. And the woman at the center of this investigation is now in jail in Hawaii. Lori Vallow's bond still set at $5 million. Her children, J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan, remain missing. Several weeks before seven-year-old JJ went missing, court documents showed Lori gave away his service dog. Our sister station in Boise spoke to a man who trained that service dog. He says he worked with JJ and Charles Vallow for weeks to train the dog. Its job, the dog's job, was to keep JJ calm and in bed at night. But the trainer says after Charles died, Lori contacted him to find the dog a new home. He called the move bizarre. Well, wouldn't JJ now more than ever need his service dog, you know, to be a comfort? And um, she said it was just too hard to take care of JJ and the dog, which again, Bailey's a highly trained service dog. Like taking care, care of him means feeding him and let him go outside to go, you know, go to the bathroom. It's not, there's not a lot of work involved. Mm. That trainer says JJ sat in the car quietly as they returned the dog. And at the time, he says Lori told him that the daughter, Tylee Ryan, was inside upset about the dog. Now he wonders if that was true. Police say both children haven't been seen since September. Right now, Lori is still in jail in Hawaii. She's facing felony child desertion charges along with other misdemeanors. She's due back in court next Monday for her extradition back to Idaho. Some disturbing news here. Officials at the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention say spread of the coronavirus in the United States is not a question of if, but when. There is currently no vaccine to prevent the virus nor medication to treat it. The agency warned U.S. citizens and local communities to prepare for, quote, disruption to everyday life in case of a pandemic. 
and U.S. stocks continue to slide downward as fears of coronavirus grow. So far, more than 80,000 people worldwide have caught the virus and a death toll sitting right around 3,000. The vast majority of them are in China, but there are now more than 50 confirmed cases of coronavirus here in the United States. Hmm. Today, the CDC said Americans and communities across the country need to start preparing and that it could be bad. Today, Trump administration cabinet secretaries face tough questions from senators about the outbreak. Mask, protective suits, ventilators, anything is that stockpiled and ready? So we do have in the strategic national stockpile ventilators. We have masks. We have enough. Other, well, of course not. So medical professionals are now in partnership with federal agencies and are working on worldwide clinical trials to find the most effective treatment for coronavirus. But a vaccine is still months away. And the latest strain of coronavirus has caused thousands of deaths. Most of those deaths were in East Asia. This has many travelers who fly worried about how planes are clean. Yes, yeah, so Evan Kosloff with our Verify team looked into that. Spring break is fast approaching for college students and high schools will follow in a little over a month. So that has a lot of people wondering about how coronavirus may impact our flights. Here's a question we got from Linda in Temple Hills. Are the airplanes cleaned after international flights to combat coronavirus? Here are the sources for this one. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the World Health Organization, a pair of trade associations, and three domestic airlines. First, we turn to the WHO, which wrote that airlines should always clean as if there was an infected person on board. But in the end, this is all gonna be up to the airlines. We reached out to the International Air Transport Association. That's one of the trade groups. They told us that they're not aware of any uniform policy or federal requirement that airlines must follow. So let's dive into the specific policies for a few domestic airlines. First, American told us that international flights get a quote, deep level of cleaning, including the disinfecting of laboratories, tray tables, galley areas, and surface areas throughout the aircraft. United says they too wipe down hard surfaces using a disinfectant. And then there's Delta. They say they use a high grade disinfectant on all flights arriving from Asia. So in the end, we can verify at least these three big airlines are cleaning their planes after landing. Well, it's good to know. It's certainly what's on a lot of people's minds right now. Yeah, that is getting to be, it's getting to be a little scary it now is. in this country. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, coming up, we're going to look ahead at the CBS Democratic debate tonight as the candidates prepare to go head to head. It's a high stakes showdown taking place just days ahead of Saturday's South Carolina primary. We've got all the details next.